Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Jamie's Photography. So in this video, we're going to do some black and white drama. I had a few requests to show how I post process into a black and white and add drama. And of course, using my day to night style and technique, uh, I'd like to take this image that you can see here and we are going to post process it into a uh, into a black and white with lots of drama. So uh, let's get started. So this is a, a shot that I took in Paris a couple of weeks ago um, up in Montmartre, a beautiful part of Paris, uh, really worth a visit if you get a chance to go there. Um, what we're going to do with this picture is we're going to uh, we're going to add some black and white drama. So you can use presets. Uh, Serge Ramanelli, for example, has some excellent uh, black and white drama presets and color uh, presets that you can uh, you can acquire from his website. Uh, I don't tend to use presets. I like I prefer to 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 actually add the the effects myself as I go. So what I'm going to do is going to take you through my process for for creating a, a black and white drama picture. So. First things we're going to do with this image is, is I'm going to sort the perspective out. You can see the buildings are leaning away from this. This was shot 16 millimeters, so very wide angle. Uh, F7.1, so plenty of depth of field. And uh, ISO 200, so not too much noise. So I'm going to go down to transform. That's where we'll start. And let's click auto to just see if we can, uh, if it fixes it. It does to do a good job, actually. Sometimes I use the guided function, but uh, I'm happy with auto here. Um, I'm going to go into the crop and I'm just going to bring the, the, the crop in to take out the areas that are now warped. There we go. I'm going to bring the top down a little bit as well. So I think I'm just going to cut out the tree from the top, something like that. And I'm going to bring that up from the bottom and I'm going to, going to work with that. So that's the image. Now there is some tidying up I, I think I need to do here. I think particularly would like to move, remove this lamppost and uh, perhaps these uh, these guys over here against the wall uh, just to just to tidy it up. I'm happy with the other things that are going on. So before I go any further, I'm going to remove those those two objects. So to do that, uh, I'm I'm going to right click. Uh, I'm going to go to Edit In, and then I'm going to Edit In Adobe Photoshop 2022. So I'll let that open. So once we get into Photoshop, we're going to initially start with uh, using a removal tool, spot re healing and, and, and spot removal tools to try to, to deal with this. So good thing to always do is to zoom in. So uh, you can either click on the magnifying glass in your tools and then you can select plus and then you can zoom in on there or you can just hold down the option key and wheel wheel the center of your mouse or or uh, on a mac you can two fingers on the uh, on the touchpad so we're going to zoom in and to reposition the screen you hold down the space bar and then left click your mouse and move it to a position where you can you can have a play with it so first thing i'm going to try is uh, the spot healing brush healing tool you can make the uh, the brush bigger and smaller by using the square brackets that, which are to the left of the return key and then get a reasonable size and then I'm going to perhaps just to try and take out the pole to begin with so what you can do is you can click click on the pole there hold down the shift key and click at the bottom so it draws a line of healing um, and that's not too bad you can still see a little bit of a mark there and here but actually it's a pretty good it's a pretty good attempt so I'm, but I'm going to try again so I'm going to control Z or command Z on a Mac to undo I'm going to make the brush slightly bigger and I'm going to try again so I'm going to click there hold down the shift key and click here and uh, actually still again not too bad at all so need a little bit of tidying up down here and then we need to take out this top piece we'll try the uh, the spot healing brush J we'll try that on the the top part of the sign so a good technique is to 
don't make the bridge the the brush too big um actually paint the, the the healing brush around and the best way is to have 50 percent over the edge of whatever it is you're painting so here for example i'm going to start here holding down the left key and i'm going to go all the way around the edge with the 50 percent overhang all the way around back up this side 50 percent overhang and then keep your finger pre pressed down on the mouse and then paint in all of the inside of the, the healing area that you are attempting to, to heal so that it's complete and then let go. And uh, actually it's not done a bad job at all. So there's a little bit of tidying up here and here that we need to do. So we can just use the spot healing tool to go back over, just paint some, just paint over the areas and um, and that brickwork is going at a slight angle there so I'm just going to take that out as well just to there we go that's come back okay and then just uh, yep that's looking pretty good and just this bit down the bottom here so just paint it in and it's got really it's not bad at all I'm quite I'm quite happy with that so this this little bit down the bottom here um, we need to use different tool we use the stamp um, clone stamp tool and how this works is we we take an area a copy of an area and then we copy it effectively across so i could i'll take a smaller brush in fact i'll, I'll zoom in a bit a bit closer and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a, a stamp from i could do it from here this would be okay and you do that by holding down the option or alt key so it turns into a little target then you left click once and it's now taken a copy of that so i now have a copy of that area and what i can do is i can move that along and click now the cross shows where the copy is and obviously the the, br the brush is where we're going to paint. So I'm holding down the left key and if I move down so will the um, the left cross and we, we can paint those railings in just like that. And then we can take another, another clone stamp, let's say from here, so hold down the alter option key to get the target, click left and then go to the center there. And again, just paint that down just to the bottom there. So, so that range complete. Now to, to, to fix this piece at the bottom, hold down the Alt or Option key again, take a, a, a stamp clone from there, and then I can move that across and just put that in like that. So it looks pretty good, I have to say. This bit here is a copy of this bit here, so I'm, I'm, I probably want to just uh, make this look a bit more random. So I'm going to take a, a snip from there. Alt or Option key there, left click, and then move that over there. And I can just paint up and paint down, just to to make that look a bit more random. So that actually looks pretty good. Bit on the wall here. Same thing. I can take Option Alt key, take a copy from over here, come back over here, and I can just paint that that bit out. There we go. And I'm just going to take that bit out as well. So if I zoom out you would never know there was a signpost there. A little bit actually at the bottom, I can still see where that was. So we, we continue to use the clone stamp tool. So I'm gonna take a stamp from here and I'm just gonna pop that in there like that. That copied that out and same here, just to, just to make that look more natural. There we go, not bad at all. So let's zoom out. So these guys over the other side, we're going to zoom in on them. So we're using the uh, option, Alt key, and uh, the wheel on the mouse to, to move in. Hold the spacebar down to center. So we're going to zoom in a bit closer. So there's a pigeon there. Look at that. that's quite good. So we need to we need to effectively clone this wall along so that they disappear. So we can use to get rid of this chap's head here. You see we can. We can take option or key, take a, a clone from here, and we can we can go in there like that, just paint that in down there. And same the other side, or option key there, just paint our way back up. We can take another clone from this little edge here, and we can just bring that up there like that. Same again. I'll make the brush a little bit smaller 
just paint that bit of the wall in. So take a clone from here and move up to this point here. And then again, we can move down, cloning him out because we're taking a copy from, from the other side there. I'm just gonna take another stamp from there and another one from here. There we go, and to get rid of the pigeon, I can just click on, on, on over there and same thing, just paint him out. So there's one chap gone. So now we'll do the other one. So we'll take a clone from here We'll move to this position here and we will do the same. We need to just follow this through here. So take it from there. Take that from there. There we go. Just paint him out. So this chap, I'm going to paint the opposite way. So I'm just going to take a clone from here, bring that in there, and then I can just copy that in there. So we're making him smaller all the time. Then we're going to take a clone from here just to get move this a little bit here. That's it. Just cover up the bits and pieces that are there. So we're almost there. I'm going to take uh, another click from there, go up there, and then we can do that last, that last bit there, just to run through there. I'm going to take a click from over here and just do the same underneath the wall, get his feet, and then we'll just take another clip from here and we will just copy this through go now we've got a repeating pattern here as you can see because we've copied copied so what we can do is just use the spot healing tool and just go over some of the areas and what it will do is it will randomize the pattern which can be quite effective I'm just going to go back to the stamp call just to make sure we get this it's okay there that's looking pretty good to be fair might be a bit dark there again go to the um, healing tool and just pop that in there there we go so that's actually pretty good a um, little bit randomizing there yeah gotcha there we go that's good so I'll zoom back out and what you'll see is uh, that it's, they're gone and it's looking, it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to send this back into Lightroom so we can continue with the adding drama. So to do that, I go File, Close, Save. Not File, Save. I do tend to do File, Close, Save. And what that does, as you can see the bottom left corner, it's saving. And once it's saved, it will be back in. There we go. Back into Lightroom. So now we're going to try to add the drama. So I have a particular style, which is my day to night style. So I like to try to create a sort of twilight, almost semi-dark um, image. And to do that, generally I'll darken the image um, and then I'll relight the image using um, radial or gradient filters. So in this case, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go uh, back up here. I'm gonna drop the exposure down by uh, probably around about one, one point seven five, one three quarter um, stops on exposure, so it's quite it's quite dark now. But then I'm going to go to masks. I'm going to add a new mask, which will be a radial gradient, and I'm going to pop quite a big one in that comes away from the bottom of this street light here. So, and I'm just going to turn it to give you a sort of bit of an angle so that the light's coming away from the the lantern. And then I'm going to boost the exposure. I'm going to brighten that up. And I'm going to move it so that the light pool is actually at the bottom of the of the uh, the lamp column. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, not too much, just enough to give it a, a, a look of tungsten light. Um, 
so at the moment it looks it looks very contrasty i'm going to add a little bit of clarity to it as well just to make it pop a little bit now if the light was coming down from this lantern it wouldn't light the front of this wall because it would sort of be in a little bit of shadow here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to subtract from this mask so go to the mask up here in the mask menu and select subtract and take a brush i'm going to have the brush on about 35 40 percent feather and quite high flow about 75 percent flow and what i want to do make my brush smaller using the square brackets to the left of the return key i'm just going to come in here i'm going to click once and then i'm going to hold down the shift key um, and go to the end of this wall so i get a straight line so i create this this sh shadow that you can see here um, now that i went a bit i went a bit too too uh too high because the light would be lighting the bench above it so i'm going to command z or control z on a windows machine I'm going to zoom back in again just uh, just so we can see a little bit closer. So I want to keep the light on the top here. So I'm going to take that brush and I'm going to put it underneath. So it's going to effectively subtract the brush, the feather and flow of 40 and 74. That's fine. I'm going to pop that underneath somewhere up here. I'm then going to hold down the shift key. And pop it along there so there's there's our shadow that we've got there uh, that's looking pretty good i'm going to reduce the flow down to about 30 percent and i'm going to do another line to on the bottom of that line so that you have this sort of almost a gradient of light that appears in that shadow um, and then we've got the light now on the top there that looks pretty good actually so I'm probably just going to remove this little bit of light at the end, it's a bit bright, so I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger so it covers the area. I'm going to click up there, I'm going to click left click and hold down the shift key and then I can just darken that down a little bit as we go from there. So now what we can do is we can light the, uh, the lantern itself. So I'm going to zoom in again and bring that into the centre. There we go. Now we do the same thing, we create a new mask, we take a radial gradient and we draw what would be the light bulb or the, la the lamp that's inside and we'd place it in the centre. Don't worry about the, the, um, the framing of the lamp for the minute, we'd pop it in the centre like that and then we'd, we'd give it 100% uh, exposure and a little bit of yellow as we talked about and a little bit of magenta because we can see a slight green hue there so just a little bit of magenta to take that green hue away. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract from that radial filter a brush. And we're going to make the brush the size, the size of that uh, little strut that comes through. However, we're going to make the feather about 20% and 100% on flow. So we're going to subtract the mask from that area. So we click at the top and then we hold down the shift and click at the bottom we get a straight line that cuts through the center of it so that's the first stage got the <clears throat> the lamp in there now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that radial filter and we're going to duplicate the mask not the actual ra radial filter but the mask um, because then that puts it back in the same place with the same masking and then what we're going to do is um, we're going to click on it and then we're going to make it bigger than the lantern itself so it's it's actually bigger than the lantern so we've got this bright bit in the middle and now the lantern is is quite well illuminated just a little bit of yellow again just to give it a little bit of yellow tinge now with the radial same thing we did before we're going to subtract the brush we're going to make sure that the the feather is quite low about 10 percent flow is a hundred percent density is a hundred percent and then we're going to take a brush and we are going to go up and around so that we square out effectively the lantern itself so I'm going to click here once so you can see it's removed the brush has subtracted the, rad the, 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 the radial gradient there but now holding down the shift key I'm going to go further up onto the same metal strut and click again so we've we've removed that with a straight line I'm then going to go click again hold down the shift key and go across the top and then click again hold down the shift key go through so I'm effectively removing the um, the, ra the radial gradient 
using the brush. Now I want to leave this bit of the bottom illuminated because the light would come out the bottom of it. So I'm going to click there, I'm going to go across here like this and effectively remove the, um, the light from the radial filter. Now I can make my brush bigger and I can go round that what I've just done to remove the, the radial gradient. So I'm just holding down, literally holding down the shift key and clicking all the way around. So now if I zoom out, I will uh, effectively be able to go around again to remove any overbleed of the the, the uh, radial gradient. So I'm just clicking as I go around without crossing over onto the lantern and just make sure that we we have the lamp done. So if I click done, move that to the center, you'll see that the lantern is now nicely lit. We have a few lanterns to do. <clears throat> there's one over there and there's also uh, a couple down the road here so um, they, they they will be done as well so for the moment I'll concentrate on this one I need to add a little bit more light to this wall because this light this light fitting would be would be casting light there so I'm going to go back to the mask I'm going to create another mask and um, I'm going to radial gradient select again and I'm going to pull it out to put it on the wall so you've got to look at where that light would hit. So this is the line coming back. This is the line. So it's going to be about here. A lot of people would think it would be here, but it's not because you can see the position of the lamp post here. If you cross that across to that wall, it's going to be about here. So you're going to be over this way a little bit. So we're going to pop that in there. Make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to bring up the exposure till we see that it's lighting the wall. A little bit of yellow as we've talked about. I can even make it wider perhaps just so it sort of looks like it's lighting that wall and and the plant there as you can see so we just need to not make sure it's too bright down here so I'm going to subtract a brush quite a large brush with quite a bit of feather this time 100% feather 100% flow and I'm just going to wash across there to take out the additional light that's that's coming from this radial gradient here so what you'll see is there's the brush and 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 this is the radial here so you overall you can see you can see that it doesn't go below that that line so you can even wash through again just to be 100 percent sure there we go so now that 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 lamp looks like it's actually being lit it's lighting the road lighting the wall uh, looks quite natural um, and it'll look more natural as we move towards the um towards the uh the, the drama effect that we're going to create in a little while so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to go through and complete these lamps and i'm just going to speed the video up so that you can see these the, these lamps being done the same way in essence as we work our way down and also this one over on the left Okay, so we've illuminated all those lamps. One thing you'll notice that I've done is as we move down the street, I've actually made them dimmer because light light obviously diminishes with distance. Um, however, looking at this one, it still looks a bit bright. So when I click back on masks, all the mask shields light up. So we can click on that one and we can just reduce that back just a little bit, not too much. It's a bit too yellow compared to the other ones. So I'm just going to back the, the temperature off slightly and then you get that effect. So we could, in fact, we could actually even make it slightly bigger. And the same goes for this one. We could actually give it a greater reach across the road, just so it uh, looks quite good. So, so now we've got our lamps illuminated. 
and um, the lanterns have the little light bulbs inside. Um, in the old days, of course, they were gas mantles, uh, but that that looks quite realistic. Also, I I would I would probably want to light one or more of these windows here as well. So um, we do it the same way, uh, the same principle. We can um, take a mask, add create a new mask, a radial, and we can place that over the window quite large like that. And a lot of people make the mistake of putting the dot right in the center of the window. Um, I'll zoom in there a second to see if we can get a little bit closer. But that's not where the light would come from in the room. The, 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 the light bulb that would be on the ceiling would be probably back here somewhere. So we need to put the, the radial filter where the light bulb would be. So that would be the brightest area. And we can make this a little bit bigger. So we'll put it in there somewhere like that. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to raise the exposure all the way up. I'm going to add some, some yellow to it, maybe a little bit more this time, so that we light the window. <clears throat> but now we're going to remove the radial filter. I'm going to come a little bit closer with that. We're going to re remove the radial filter around the window, um, but leave it in the glass panes. So again, subtract a brush, um, and then zoom in on this window a little bit more just so we're nice and close so we can see where we are and I'm going to go around the edge of this window clicking holding down the shift key clicking again we've got a negative sign on that brush saying that we're subtracting so where the light wouldn't come from in this window would be it wouldn't bleed around the corner there'd effectively be this this shadowed edge so I'm just going to pop that back in there so same with the window seal we're not going to see we're not going to see light coming from this window on the outside of that and on this edge we also would have a shadow quite a thick shadow coming up coming up there in fact I'm going to put it right over there there we go so again I can make my brush larger we've got no feather we've got a, a very and we've got a hundred percent flow so we're literally just you know bashing away the radial filter around that window <clears throat> so now to do the window the light coming from this window would light up this face here here so we don't want to make that too dark um, but we do want to to actually black out the the um, the frame itself so I'm going to I'm still staying on this brush I'm just going to apply a little bit of feather about 15% feather and I'm just going to back the feather off to about 75 make my brush smaller using the the square bracket keys which are to the left of the return key and then I'm just going to make the brush the size of the window there I'm going to click once go to the bottom holding the shift key down click again just fill up that bit of the top go across the top here as well so just across there and maybe into that little bit as well um, and then I might come down here a little bit more feather and then just pop that down there and one across the center as well so we've effectively created this sort of shadow line we will blend the edges in a moment but I'm just whilst we're here with this setting I'm just going to make my brush smaller still and I'm just going to go across these smaller frames just so, so it's looking good right now we're just going to need to feather these edges away and blend that so I'm going to raise the feather up to about 65 bring the flow down to about 35 make my brush bigger and then I can now click and paint along that line and what you want to do is you want to blend it over the edges so effectively you go halfway over the out the darker edge and the lighter edge and you just blend that in same here we go along there like this along that edge like that and what you get is this blended effect same with the along the edge of the windows so I'm just going to go along the edge of the windows like that because we've got the lower the lower level of um, feather uh, and also lower flow it allows us to to be able to really blend those those edges in so as you can see I'm always changing my brush size just to fit with the 
with the area that I actually want to uh, want to actually cover. There we go. So just going around blending those edges a little bit bigger on the brush, and we're going to go down the edge there like this. So I'm just going to blend that as well. So you've got to think about how light actually f how it looks and where the shadows would be. You've got to try to figure out. Um, where in essence um, you're going to get these different gradients of light. I might even bring that down just a little bit more. There you go. Because I've got a low flow, I'm able to build up the shadows around the window. And I think I'm going to do the same on this outer ridge here. Just, just darken that down a little bit more. So you've got the light coming from the window. It looks, looks quite authentic when you do it this way and um, but it's better to use a lower flow rate and add more as you go forward um, and that just small brush there just do that edge just darken that edge down there we go same on this one yeah that looks no it looks pretty good so now we can zoom out a little bit. So, um, and we can go back to a zero feather, full 100% flow, make our brush big, and take the rest, <coughs> excuse me, take the rest of this out without going over the window. Very important that you do not overlap over the window. So we go around and we should take it out. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit more as you can see that it's uh, it's in the sky there and just make sure you've got all of that radial gradient out so let's let's zoom back to the full picture position and you can see the window there looks pretty good we're still on the mask so you can see the mask is only lighting the window and there's no mask around it so that's looking pretty good we're going to try to boost that a little bit more so I'm going to bring the highlights up as well so I can bring the highlights up and I, if, if I want it even brighter still, I can bring the whites up as well. Just keep building the brightness there. I'm going to add a little bit of magenta to that to give it a, a, quite a good look. So, so there you go, the windows in there. I'm not going to do all the windows now. Uh, sometimes you do you know, a number of windows, but actually less is more quite often uh, when you look at these things. So now we've got that together, what we probably want to do now is look at the sky and also the greenery around. Um, I'm actually gonna crop this again. Now I'm looking at, I'm gonna bring this crop over onto this wall and I'm gonna bring this this over here, just, just near there. Now I want this to be straight. You can see it's not straight. So I can go back to my transform that we started with. I can go to guided and what I can do is I can pick, I click and hold and let go a straight line on the things I want to be straight. So the corner of that building, down to the bottom of the corner of that building. So I want that lamppost on the right and I want this, this building to be straight. See how it's done that? So perfectly straight now. And if I wanted to, I could get a level across the bottom here as well. You can add up to four of these. So I could put one on this, this tower, the center of this tower and just aim to get the tower straight as well there we go so now it, now it's all straight so this little bit of tree coming in on the top here that doesn't that doesn't work too well um, we're prob probably going to need to take that out so we've got this this greater sky to do that now to do that uh, I, I would really go uh, back into to Photoshop so we can do that we again right click edit in Photoshop you want to make sure that you edit with a copy of your Lightroom adjustments because of all that those things that we've changed in there. And we're going to go back over into Lightroom, uh, sorry, Photoshop, and then we're going to have a look at this. Now I like to use the patch tool as a show, as 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 a, a way of removing things. The patch tool can be found in the uh, the the spot healing brush um, menu. I tend to separate them out, and then there's some good tutorials online to show you how to set out your tools for Photoshop so that you have easy access to them. So I'm using the patch tool and I'm just going to draw around 
loosely around the bit I want to get rid of and then I'm just going to go up the outside to create that area that I want to uh, to patch and then I'm going to hold down the left key on my mouse and I'm going to move that across slide that across and let go and and you'll see that it will have blended that in using the content aware blend it's blended that in to get rid of the dancing ants uh, command or control D um, and that gets rid of them so we've, we've got a really really nice effective uh, removal there so that's all I actually wanted to do in this shot so I'm going to go back to Lightroom file close save and it's going to go back into Lightroom whilst it's saving there and then we're going to go back into Lightroom so we now have the previous um, pano edit.tiff and we've got the new one which is the pano edit edit tiff so i've no i've no need for that that middle one they do take up a lot of space on your hard drive so right click you can choose to keep it or right click click remove photo and i then click delete from disk and then it removes that one and then we go back to the new one that we've got the edit edit tiff so we've got the lights in there i, I want to do something with the sky so um first thing i'm going to do is go back to masks i'm going to select sky okay so the, the computer selects the sky and then i'm going to on the three dots of the sky mask i'm going to intersect with a linear gradient and i'm going to pull that from the, the top down like this so that the sky sort of remains brighter uh, towards the bottom and then i'm going to bring down the exposure on the right, add a bit more blue to it. That's good. Um, I'm going to boost the contrast. And the big one when you're doing skies is always clarity. So chuck a whole handful of clarity in there. It looks, looks quite nice indeed. So that's looking nice. We've got this sort of darkness up in the top, the top there. I'm going to click on another mask and this time I'm going to select brush. I'm going to make sure that the auto mask is not ticked when I'm in the brush mask i'm going to put the feather to 100 percent i'm going to put the flow to 50 percent roughly density will stay there i'm going to take a reasonable size brush on here and i'm going to add some exposure so i'm going to add about one and a half stops bear in mind the flow is at 50 percent so i can then just lighten up these areas where we do have uh, some cloud yeah just the lightness in the cloud same on this side no harm in just popping it in you can change the brush size as well and you can just brighten up those areas it's probably it's probably a little much so i can always back that down the to, to maybe one stop on exposure so it's not too bright i can add some contrast to that that particular brush and i can also add some clarity that which just gives you quite an interesting sky so i'm going to go back to the crop again i feel like i need to crop again so i'm going to bring this crop down like this at the top give myself a new position because each time you make changes to the image you you know the image looks different it feels different so um so that's looking pretty good to be fair I mean, that's looking pretty good i'm going to go back into masks i'm going to uh create another mask another brush um, and I just want to lighten up the, the trees this time. But to do that, this time I'm going to put the auto mask on. And the auto mask means that it takes wherever the, the center plus is of your brush. And it uses that as the basis for where you're going to paint. So it won't paint over into the, the lighter area of the sky. So if I boost, I'm going to put a lot of exposure in just to show you now. If I, if I just paint up onto this tree, staying on the tree, it mustn't go off the tree, you'll see that same in here that it will light the tree but not the sky around it you get a little bit of a sometimes a little bit of bleed over um, but what i've done is effectively illuminated that area um, i'm going to put some contrast on that and again some clarity just not too much this time um, and i'm just going to warm it slightly with a bit more temp so you can see that the, the color of the the uh, the tree there is is brighter than the uh, area around you don't want to do all of it you it's good to have 
um, contrasty areas um, so that you can see different brightnesses. Um, I'm also going to perhaps put a uh, something something to detail the, this building at the end, the church that we can see at the end. So I'm going to create a another radial filter, and I'm literally going to pull it across this building at the end. So just bring that in there. So we're going to bring some light onto it. Now, if I bring that up, you will see that we can just add a little bit of detail there, a little bit of color as well, not too much, just to to show show it there. Now, this is overlapping this building, so you've got this on here. It doesn't look good, so you know the trick now. Subtract a brush. Uh, go to a very low feather and 100% flow with a negative brush. We will go to the edge of that building. I'm just going to center that. I'm going to go to the edge of that building there, click at the top, Click at the bottom using the shift key to get a straight line, make my brush bigger, and I'm just going to remove the remainder of that, that radial filter over here. So I'll just zoom out again. So there we go. So effectively you get this almost like a the the light coming round the corner onto the building. It's a bit bright, so I can go back to that mask and I can just back it off a little bit just to give me a little bit of detail. And what we're actually doing is we're producing depth in the image. We've got these stages of light going away from us. Now, the main feature here, of course, is this tower. So it would make sense that we, we, we try to illuminate this tower in some way. So I would use the same approach, create a mask, take a, a radial gradient, put one in the vertical here, um, something like that. And um, I would brighten that up um, just a little bit but of course it's it creates this halo because it's going around on onto the sky itself so I can subtract the sky from that that actual radial filter there so if I make it brighter it doesn't light the sky up which is which is quite good so I'm gonna put that in there add a little bit of color again not too much and I'm going to add some clarity just to the building uh, it's lit the tree up here uh, quite a bit, so I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to effectively come over here. We need to remove this really from the building. So I'm going to, on, on, the, on the mask, I'm going to subtract a brush. So uh, this time I'm going to have a lot of feather. Auto mask is on, so as I click on the tree, it will darken the tree but not the building behind this is quite a clever little little trick this is all to do with your auto mask when you're in your brush so I'm just clicking on the actual tree there and as you can see what you end up with is the the building itself which is being illuminated by the radial filter staying there but the tree in front has been darkened so we're not lighting the tree up uh, so let's click done on that and zoom back out. So it actually looks quite quite natural, quite natural indeed. So I think we're getting somewhere near. I'm probably going to um, pop around the whole thing a, a vignette. So you can go down to effects. You can bring this amount down. Bring it down to about minus 30 there. And then open the feather for it up so it, it, it's not too oppressive around the outside edges you can do that as well now i think we're pretty close to just moving over to black and white um, but we, before we do that we can alter the overall brightness and uh, of the image we can do some overall changes so we can go back to the basics here which are all set at zero again because we went into photoshop and came back again as, as, as a tiff so we could increase, for example, the highlights. You could do that, raise them up, and that will give you quite a nice effect. I'm actually going to bring up a little bit. You can bring up the brightness a little bit, just just to to give you more of a feel. Now the now the highlights are a bit bright. We can see what the shadows do. If I bring open the shadows up, it gives a little bit of a false look. If we close the shadows down, it it actually gives it quite a nice effect there. So I'm just going to brighten it just a little bit more. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, I'm going to click the black and white function here. 
and it will turn over to black and white. Now when you go black and white, people tend to just click that button from wherever they were and they think, well, well bang, I've got myself a black and white image. But, but black and white deserves a little bit more attention. And one of the main attentions that I like to use overall is more contrast. So you can bring that contrast up. So there I just went to you know plus, plus 35. Um, you can bring the clarity up okay really starts to add that drama just by adding that contrast and that clarity you really can see that you can see now this is a bit bright on this building um, so i can go back into my masks i can go back to that mask there and uh, i can um, either bring it down a little bit there we go or better still i can subtract another brush from the whole thing have have the feather quite high flow quite high and I can just paint up from the bottom here just to just sort of change the way that that light sort of now not on that bottom piece but mostly on that top piece so so that's working quite well so we've got some drama now I might even look at adding a little bit more clarity too much too much bring it back a little bit um, a little bit more contrast yeah I could do but to compensate I would need to raise the exposure okay now my blacks and whites um, I've pretty well avoided them all the way through here because it's one of the last things I'd like to do when you're working on a black and white so I'm going to hold down the option or alt key and I'm gonna slide the white slider until we see that that white coming through so not too bright about there and the same with the blacks I'm just there is a bit of black it's good to have a little bit of black those railings on the left look look pretty good yeah that's not bad at all it's quite dark over here so what what i can do is add another radial create a mask go to radial and i can just over here in this corner uh, pop in a quite large radial just to try and fill that just a little bit of exposure just to light it up just a little bit just so that there's balance between the left and right so you see i'll just open that up there um, that works quite well. Um, might even want to bring this top corner down a little bit more darkness so I can add another linear from this corner down like that. And I can just bring the exposure down just a little bit more. There we go. So um, I'm quite happy with that. Lots of drama, uh, real depth to the image. You've got the you've got the sort of main subject end at the end. Uh, the basilica the church is is there and it's illuminated it's part of the image and you've got these these street lamps that that sort of illuminate as you go down the road and this little window that just adds a little bit of interest up on the top left we got rid of the sign got rid of the people had a little bit of a tidy up you know with a little bit more effort we could take the sign off the uh, off the, the the lantern on the right excuse me on the right hand side maybe we could do a little bit more with the sky but for now I, I think I'm happy with that. Hopefully you've enjoyed doing a little bit of black and white drama. Um, keep, keep watching this space. I'm going to do more videos uh, and more, more day to night style photography. So for now, thank you very much and goodbye.